Happiness is a choice. Thoughts are powerful. If you expect good things, you'll get good things. If you fear bad things, you'll attract bad. You need to accept, cope, and adapt. These were all of the coping strategies that I talked about on stage as a motivational speaker because I believed in every single one of them. They always worked for me until they didn't. 2013 was the year of the great unraveling in my life. I'd had a breakup, and days later, my mom passed away. And then, not three months later, my dad also died in my arms. I'd bought this move-in ready house, and we always know what that means. Deep black hole to throw your money in. And every week it was $5,000 more, $10,000 more, and my life just kept getting more and more difficult. Grief was something I had never experienced before, and it felt like my feet were stuck to the ground. And the worst thing about it for me was that I made my living as a motivational speaker. I was being paid to go into these rooms and make people happy, when on the inside, I was falling apart. There were certain signs of this. I had started putting on weight, I wasn't going out much, I was agitated, I'd lost hope. And at the anniversary of my mother's death, I was in a hotel in Dallas, the same hotel I had been in the day after her death. And I looked at my life and realized I was depressed. I knew that I need, either needed to take something or do something. And so that day, I flew home to my home county of Pinellas County, Florida, started looking at Google Earth, and the next morning got up early, went to our southernmost beach, and started walking. Much like Forrest Gump and his famous run across the country, I felt like there had to be some way to take charge of my life again. Because sometimes, Life gets away from us, and we don't see that there is a way out of our troubles. Sometimes it's not as hard as we think. So stay with me for a minute and come on my journey. This is the beginning of my big adventure. It's been raining all day. The clouds are beautiful. For now, there is no rain. So let's see what happens. Blowing crazy wind and I'm freezing already but I gotta make some miles today. That walk kicked my butt. It was just nonstop wind. It was horrible, but yet awesome. Wind is back. Shell is in honor of my father and my mother's memory, which was in my heart every step. This one is in honor of the walk, which brought me back to being myself. I'm happy that I'm the only person on it at this point. It's just such a blessing. It's a gift. I feel like it's just for me. Great day. Just go a few miles at a time, you can go a long way. You don't have to do everything at once. So 
got here where I was what, eight days ago when I started. Hey, I feel good. I feel solid. I feel like I learned something really important about how much power we have over what holds us down. Because sometimes all it takes is a big change to make a big difference. So when I think about what I was thinking when I was out there, I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just living. One thing I learned a long time ago is that you never know how close you are to turning the corner until you actually turn the corner. So all you can keep doing is putting one foot in front of the other until you get where you need to go. You just have to have faith that it's going to happen. And when I did this thing, I had never heard of anyone doing it. I doubt anybody's ever done it before because logistically the county is so weird. It would take an hour to get to one end and then every day I'd walk to my bike and bike to my car and it was, it was all of this. But something happened when I woke up on the fourth day of the walk and it was hope and joy. And I remember thinking, where am I going today? How far will I go? And then every day, I was getting stronger and stronger until the very last day when I finished. And I thought to myself, I wonder how long this will last. And you know what? It lasted. I was fine. I was back in my own skin. So the big idea here is we have an immense potential to reset ourselves if we just make up our minds to do something. We have that power. And as you make up your mind, you don't have to do it my way. Feel free to come down to St. Pete and start walking. But you can go and raft the Grand Canyon or spend a week gardening or sing for a week and dance or go to jazz clubs. Whatever it is that trips your breakers, figure it out and plan yourself a reset. I know someone who wants to take a motorcycle on Route 66 for a reset. That's not my choice of what I would do. Do what you would do. And you create a challenge, a moment in your life, something significant, so that you know you are literally resetting. A reset is not a do-over, it's a start over. We do that all the time, first of the year, right? But we can do it on a Monday, on a Wednesday, at one o'clock. You can do it on the beach, in a teepee, at a revival tent, wherever you want. Do something that will give you meaning and a break by making time for it and making it grand. Because what you're looking for isn't magic answers, it's clarity. It's space in your brain. I always love these pictures because I interviewed Catherine Switzer for one of my books, and she's the first woman to officially run the Boston Marathon. And after she did that, she started going all over the world teaching people about fitness because she had an easy way to do it. And I said, yeah, but what do you tell somebody who has 100 pounds to lose? And she said, put on your shoes. Put on your shoes. It's so simple. What it means is just take the first step step. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have to do this just to get out of grief. It could be that you need a reset to deal with the malaise of a job you don't like, or a relationship that you're not into it, or recovering from somebody doing something that hurt you. Just take the first step to end it, and then get moving. Solitude is where the answers are. And you have to find the place that will give your brain the space to experience that solitude. For me, I think fresh air is the biggest antidote there possibly is. I love the outdoors. When you see big sky and fresh air, it gives you just time to just be. I think I had an advantage on my walk because I have famously bad feet. And my feet hurt so much, I couldn't think about anything except getting where I was going. But just keep moving along your journey and the answers will come to you. And have perspective. Because we get so tied up in whatever it is that's pulling us down that we often forget what is real and what really matters in the world. This is a picture of the marsh at Cumberland Island National Seashore in South Georgia. 
And I used to go there all the time when I was younger because I was a reporter and that was my favorite beach. And I'd go back Sunday night after camping and the ranger one time was on the ferry with me and, and we're watching the sun go down. And I said, well, back to the real world. And I will never forget him looking at me and going, this is the real world. Don't forget that the real world is what matters to you and don't lose perspective. Always ground yourself in what matters. This actually was on Cumberland Island last year. I went camping by myself and I didn't time it right so that the pleasant weekend that I thought I was going to have was actually smoking hot. It was bad. And I'm there by myself and I have my chair and I forgot to bring myself a book. So I'm sitting there sweating, and I'm thinking, I need some Gatorade. <laughs> I'm going to get some Gatorade in, in 15 minutes, because I was too hot to move. And then 15 minutes would come, I, I really need that Gatorade, but uh, I'll do it in 10 minutes. And then, then it'd be, I'd get the Gatorade, and I'd be like, I, I should just take a shower. <sighs> I would feel so much better if I took a shower. And then all of this time was consumed by me just thinking of nothing. I had nothing to distract me, no internet, no phone, couldn't even be looking at, at you know, news apps or TMZ online. I am sitting in this chair just sitting, thinking of nothing. And then when I got to the ferry to leave and I felt myself start to cool down, something amazing happened. All of the problems I had thought I was going there to think about and solve, and I hadn't thought about once, were suddenly answered. The answers came when I cleared out my brain enough for the clarity to come. So I encourage you to do this, to take the moment and the opportunity to reset, because life is short and it is unpredictable. And I want you to know about two people that taught me this especially. One being this woman, Brenda Barnes, who was the first woman CEO of Notice. And she was the CEO of PepsiCo North America. And that, as you can imagine, was quite a grind. And at some point, she said, I've had enough of this. I want a time out because I want time with my children. And she was skewered in the media because she took this break for work-life balance and wasn't she supposed to be this hard-charging CEO? And she says, I never wanted to be the poster child for work-life balance. I just wanted time with my kids. That was her reset. When she spent seven years with the kids and they got to that point where they stopped needing to hang around with their mom, she went back to work, became the CEO of Sara Lee Corporation. Now I say, Sara Lee, I know you're thinking about, sounds like it would be good to have some pound cake or cheesecake about now. But Sara Lee was actually a huge holding company with everything from Hanes and Playtex and Hillshire brands and meats and coffees. And this company, when she inherited it, needed to be pared down by 40% or it was going to die. And she announced that, and the board was right behind her, but the stock plummeted. So there was huge pressure on her. One night, when she got off the bench press, when she was working out, she collapsed and had a brain bleed and was never able to go back to work again. We became friends, and we talked about how lucky she was that she had made the choices, when she made the choices, to reset and have that time with her kids. Because when crisis came, her kids dropped everything. They dropped everything to be there for her like she was for them. She passed away a year and a half ago but really left that as a mark in my mind because if you're waiting to do what really matters to you, you're missing the point. The time is now. And this is the other person I want to tell you about. It's my friend, Ann Johnson, who did live a wild, wonderful life. She was a reporter with me back when we were in Jacksonville. And she quit her job to go sail around the world, and she did a lot of fun things with her husband. And then while she was doing them, I had moved to Colorado, and we lost touch. And by the time I moved back to Florida and found her, she had been diagnosed with ALS. 
And by the time I actually saw her, she was quite paralyzed and only able to talk with a touch screen where she would tap letters would then spring, uh, speak words. And she showed me this picture that was next to her and I said, wow, that's gorgeous. And she tapped out, that was last summer. You don't know what's coming. What you do know is that on some level, happiness really is a choice. And if you're not feeling it, if you're not living it, take the steps you need to take in order to reset and reboot. When I finished my reset walk, I remember I knew I had to drop to my knees and write something in the sand to commemorate it. And I didn't want it to be anything corny or contrived. And I, and I didn't want to overthink it. So I just kind of leaned over and I wrote the word, done. And I was done. I was done with the grief and the sadness. I was done waiting for things to happen. And for all of those years that I had just say, keep moving forward because you don't know when you're going to turn the corner. When I wrote that in the sand, I knew I'd turn the corner. Thank you very much.